this is just to show you the process. It's not a step-by-step. It's not a how-to. It's, hey, I'm going to do this, go through this experience together, and we'll see what the result is. So roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, so the book that we're going to experiment with is Strange Tales 114. I got this uh, on an auction site. It looked good. And when I got it in hand, I got a good deal on it. I noticed things like this. In the back, see these deep creases on the back cover? Those are definitely improvable with a press. And you've got a few other things on the front here that could be improved. So what we're gonna do is crack, press, and then resubmit this. You can also see there's some dirt here that we're gonna try to get off. Right now it's a 4.5. So we're gonna experiment together and see if we can bump this up uh, a half point or two. So let's get started. So the first thing you wanna do is crack it out of the slab. And there is a really good method for doing this. And that is you kinda take it and you gotta get it loose a little bit first. You kinda give it a little twist. Hear that crack? That's what you wanna hear. That's kind of breaking the posts at the corners where it's sealed. And it's also giving you a little room near the top, a little wiggle room to get your screwdriver in. You take your screwdriver and you kind of get it in there like this on the top. Kind of got to give it a little crack, you'll hear it. And then you can shimmy it through here along the side like this. Get my hand out of the way and you'll hear more cracking. There we go. And get it down the side. And as you're doing this, twist your screwdriver towards the outside edge. So you can keep cracking it all the way down the side like this. And then do the same for the other side. Definitely take out the label at this point and put that aside and save it. Because you're gonna want to uh, compare your work when the slab gets back. So now we're going to the other side this, doing the same thing down this side. You're just shimming it down and you're rotating to the outside all the way down, like that, so you get to the end. At this point, you should be able to open the book, or open the slab, and gently remove your book. Gently. Now this next part is tricky. You really want a new, fresh X-Acto blade. Don't use a dull one. Don't try to save money. This is the important part where you really want to take care of your book. And you're going to gently, slowly remove the book from the inner well by cutting along the side. This is dangerous, so not for the faint of heart and along the top as well just make sure you don't get near the edge of the book that's a nightmare a little bit right here i want to get there we go and just to be safe I'm gonna shimmy it down a little bit from here and get some of this side off as well. Being careful to stay away from the spine. That is the most uh, nerve wracking moment of this whole process. So don't be afraid to stop, breathe, and take your time. And as you can see now, We've got the book out. Boy, it smells like a comic book. At this point, you want your gloves on. Get your gloves, um, because you're gonna be handling the book. And I just wanna show show it off to the camera here. You can probably see where, if I can catch the light, there are some pressable defects on the front cover around here. It looks like someone tried to press this before and did not have a lot of success. It's a little wavy across the top. There's a big fold in the middle, but we can do a better job. That's why we're doing some CPR here. We can do a much better job here. 
yeah, it looks like the entire book, if you can see here, was folded along the entire back here. And they tried to press that out and you can see these really, just really deep indentions that definitely we can press these out, no problem. I have faith. But first, let's remove the uh, archival paper inside. You should find that and remove it because you don't want that in the humidity chamber with you. Ooh, this book smells like an old funny book. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can smell it from here. It looks pretty clean. Um, I don't think we have to do a lot of cleaning here. That, that may be unnecessary, but especially with the fragile nature of this book, we're gonna skip that, but I will do a quick demo just to show you. I know we said we were gonna skip cleaning this one, but I do wanna show you guys a couple of the tools. Uh, a document cleaning pad, which you can get from Amazon, is very effective, as well as absorbing paper uh, cleaner. And the absorbing comes in a tub like this, and you kinda have to get it and use it like Play-Doh. You warm it up with your hands first, give it a nice little, you know, kneading, get it nice and warm. And then what you do is you roll it very slowly and carefully across the book. This is where a lot of people get in trouble, is where they get really aggressive with the putty and they're like, nah, 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 nah. don't do that. You wanna kind of take your glove and just gently go across where you see the dirt, like that, really slowly. There's no need to be super aggressive here. Just right across the spine there where you see some of the dirt collected. And this is not magic. It's not gonna pick everything up. And if you're expecting that, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. But you can kind of see the surface dirt, it does pick up. And be real careful when using this around the edges of the cover, because as you can see right there, it lifts the book up with it. And if you get too aggressive, it lifts the book up and you can really damage the book. So just give it a real quick, well, not quick. I'm contradicting myself. Give it a real careful cleaning, nice and slow like that. And then you wanna kind of wipe it off with a clean tissue or Swiffer. Get all the little pieces of the absorbing putty off of it. Take a look at the front cover. The front cover looks very clean. I don't really want to mess with that. Uh, the absorbing pad or the absorbing putty, don't reuse it when you're done. You can see the dirt on it. Throw it away. This isn't expensive. You can buy more. You're a high roller. Document cleaning pad is really messy, so get ready for that. It's got a lot of little shavings on it, almost like an eraser, eraser shavings. And you kind of want to go over the book and see the little shavings coming off. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can do a close up. You see that? And you just kind of use it like this. Be careful though, because if you get too aggressive, it will take the ink off. Just like that. Nice and clean. And whoever does the housework is going to hate you because there's going to be little shavings everywhere. They're going to be like, why'd you do that? You want to get your shavings off the book completely. I prefer, when I'm in my workspace, I get a little can of compressed air and I shoot it. Compressed air can be your best friend. nice and clean. Really important to get all that debris off because if you don't, when you go to press the book, there's a chance that you can press some of that debris into the book and that completely defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do here. So make sure it's super clean. All that stuff is off. Double check it, triple check it. You can't check it enough. See there's still some here. Now it's time to put your book in the humidity chamber. So here's what you need to do that. You've got 
a grill grate, kind of like you use to put vegetables on your barbecue grill. You can get these on uh, Amazon really cheaply. You need two magazine backing boards in paper and a clean towel. I prefer using towels from Hilton Hotels. So just lay the towel on your grate like that. Lay one of the backing boards on the grate and then put your book on top of the backing board. I always do a final check for any dirt too at the same time. Make sure I got all those little bits off. And then put the other backing board on top. What this is doing, it's protecting the book from any water droplets or condensation that may fall from the humidity chamber. And you don't want it to land on your book because that's not gonna be good. And then you just kind of tuck it in. Good night, little book. Okay, so now we've got our humidity chamber, which is basically just one of those tubs that you can buy at Target or Walmart. Some chip clips that you can get at CVS or Walgreens or Target and most importantly distilled water not any other kind of water except distilled water this keeps the book from getting stained or anything should uh, any minerals or deposits happen which can happen with regular water or non distilled water you've got your four uh, cylinders that kind of keep the book up above the water and you've got for what I prefer is I like to do um, eight cups of distilled water for four hours. That seems to be the best benefit for me. I, I see some people have different formulas. If you look at Captain Mike's book, he'll give you a whole bunch of options. But for me, I find four hours with eight cups of distilled water is just enough to get the book to a really nice pressable point. So we got everything set up here. We take our book and our grate with our towel and our backing boards, set it right there on the cylinders, close our book up, and then we put the distilled water on top to kind of seal it. And then we put our chip clips around just to kind of create an airtight seal to make sure none of that precious, precious humidity slips out. So don't be afraid to use your chip clips. And then we let this bad boy sit for four hours. Many unbearable hours later. Okay, now our book is out of the humidity uh, chamber and you'll see it shouldn't be damp, but it should have like a heavier feel to it. You shouldn't have any kind of dampness or wetness on it, but it should actually feel heavier because the pages are now infused with some humidity. And you can see that any kind of bends will be really pronounced now. They'll actually look a little worse than they did before. And that's normal. It should be that way because that means the book has plenty of moisture and that means it will also react better to the heat and the pressure of your press. So now you've got your book out. You want to have a little stack made that you can use for the press. Three magazine size backing boards, a piece of silicone release paper, and I like to put those on top of a paper towel, and you'll see why after I get everything together here. But I've got my three magazine backing boards, my silicone release paper to make sure the book doesn't stick to this. Now you've got your book. You want to put another magazine backing board in the center fold. That's to keep the staples from getting uh, sunk in into the book and, and giving it a real bad, overly pressed look. You want to make sure that you give the staples room to be staples pretty much, you know. So there's the centerfold. Some great uh, Dick Ayers art here. And you got right in there. Make sure you've got plenty of room at the top and bottom. So that's supporting the staples. You then want to put some 60 pound paper between the back cover and the back page like that and you want to do the same thing 
with the front cover and the first page like this. So you've got your book in a little stack here on top of your silicone release paper and your three backing boards, just like that. Everything is all lined up nicely. You then put another piece of silicone release paper on the top of the book, and then you finish it off with three more backing magazine size backing boards on top. Just like that, you made a little book sandwich here. And now you'll see why I like the paper towels, because you've got this stacked up. You don't wanna to try to lift it up and get everything all off center. So what I do is I just end up sliding the paper towel just like this, then to the edge of the table, and then I can grab the whole thing and get a real good grip on it. Now comes the fun part, pressing the book. Uh, all sorts of different presses out there. I have a Seal Compress 110S. I love this thing. I've had it for 10 years. It is a real workhorse. <laughs> yes, I have Showgirls on DVD. <laughs> uh, and it just, you know, it never fails me. It is really consistent. The temperature is consistent. The pressure is consistent. And I've got it down to a science. One thing you should absolutely do with your press is make sure that the temperature is properly calibrated. And you can do that by buying these little temperature strips off of Amazon. And what you do is you just put it in the press in the middle of a backing board for a few minutes, let it heat up, and then you can get an accurate feel for the temperature. Now, for a silver or bronze age book, you wanna use 165 degrees for 15 minutes. So I have my press preheated to 165 degrees. I have my little stack that I made in here ready to go. And because this is the seal press, I don't have to adjust the pressure or anything. It's already preset the way I like it. And there are really detailed descriptions on how to set the pressure for your particular press in Captain Mike's book, which I, I can't recommend enough, but we're ready to go. So you just close that lid tight, clamp her down, and 15 minutes later, we'll come and check on the press. 15 minutes later. Okay, now that our 15 minutes is up, we have turned our press off and we leave it. We don't touch it. We're gonna leave it in the press just like it is, still pressed down, still sealed, and we're gonna let it cool off for 12 hours. Many unbearable hours later. Good morning, everybody. Let's check on the book and see how we did. Okay, we've got the press preheated to 165 again. So let's swing our little plate in away and check on the book. And remove the backing boards carefully and the SRP paper. What you're going to do is definitely throw this SRP paper away. Don't reuse it because it gets wrinkled and there's a chance that the book can uh, inherit those wrinkles from the uh, SRP paper. So just use it once. And we're gonna lift the book up, place it to the side, get rid of this SRP paper, place our new SRP paper down. Flip the book and replace it. Let's take a look, if you can see, we're already doing a good job on getting rid of those really deep indentions. In fact, they seem to be pretty much gone already, but we still have another 12 hours to press this side. So let's do that. Another piece of that clean new SRP paper. We replace our backing boards. Let's make sure everything is straight here. SRP paper, make sure, there you go. That's why you use magazine size, so you have a little more room to work with than just the book size in case something doesn't quite light up, you're still safe. Close this bad boy. For 15 minutes, and then we'll turn it off and let it sit another 12 hours. Many hours later. Okay, so after 12 hours in each side in the press, here we are. Why 12 hours each side? 
Well, that helps keep the book from reverting back to its wrinkled state that it was in before. If you leave it a good 12 hours on each side in the press, that's gonna help minimize any chance of reversion. So right now we're looking pretty good. Uh, it's looking really, really clean, really flat. And what about those deep indentions, indentations in the back? They're gone. Look at that. So all the spine issues that we had before are now resolved. Uh, and you know, it still has that really deep fold where somebody had folded the entire book. You know, pressing is not a magic bullet that's gonna solve everything, but it does present a lot better now. And we will put this uh, in a nice mylar so it presents nicely. We will send it over to CGC and we will see what happens. So here she is, Strange Tales 115, Origin of Doctor Strange, early Spider-Man appearance, second appearance of the Sandman, strangely enough. It looks good now. We've got the little label there so I can keep track. And I am going to send this off with my next value submission, and we will keep you guys posted as to what grade it comes back in. I'm a little iffy if it's going to get a bump because... I'm going to be honest with you, Richard, 4.5 after seeing that big fold diagonally through the book, I kind of think it got a gift grade. Yeah, that's that's so, going to be tough. Uh, 4.5 is an interesting grade. I mean, it's hard to get come up uh, from that. So we'll see. We'll see. But you have to admit, it definitely looks better now. Oh, it? absolutely. Those pinches along the, along the spine on the back were so pronounced previously. I think. Yeah, it's and they're gone job. now, so that's fantastic. So I'm sending it off of value. So what will happen first? Will I get my books back from CGC, or will we have a vaccine? That's a good question. CGC right now, just that, uh, for the people that may, may not be watching this uh, timely, has some really, really slow turnaround. So we're, we're suffering through that. So hopefully they'll, they'll get their act together and get these books back before Christmas.